In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, we're going to work through the textured Tunisian crochet cowl, a free pattern sponsored by Clover USA. So grab your hooks and your yarn and let's get started. We're going to begin our cowls by making a slip knot. And just like many of the other Tunisian crochet patterns you may have tried, we're going to begin with a foundation row. So we need to make 31 chains to start off our cowl. We have to work in an odd number for this stitch pattern to work out. And you want to crochet them a little bit more loose than you normally would. So you can see I'm actually putting quite a bit of tension on that working yarn and pulling up on the loop just to make them a little more loose than I normally would. Once you have your 31 chains, we're going to pull up a loop into every chain. This is going to be the forward pass of the foundation row, and I'm gonna flip my chain over so I can see the back bump. And that's where I'm going to work my hook. I'm going to skip this first chain here and work my hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop and leave that loop on my hook. And I'll do that in the next chain and in the next. And we're gonna do that for every single chain. Insert your hook into that back bump, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Now the one thing you'll notice is that my work slides very nicely up and down my hook. I wanna make sure that I don't have too much tension or I'm not making the stitches too tight because if you do, then you will find yourself fighting against the yarn. If these loops are too tight, you won't be able to work the forward pass and the return pass very easily and that's gonna make for a, a much more unpleasant experience. So you'll just work this until you get to the end of the row. You'll have a total of 31 loops on your hook when you get to the end. Once you've pulled up a loop into every single one of your chains, now your hook looks something like this. So with that, we've completed the forward pass of the foundation row, but we're not finished with that foundation row yet. In Tunisian crochet, one row is made up of a forward pass and a return pass. So to work the return pass, we're going to yarn over and just pull through the first loop that's on your hook. With this stitch, we are creating a nice little edge and technically it's a chain that we've made right there. And that chain is going to give us a nice straight edge throughout the project. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is yarn over and pull through two loops. So the next two loops that are available and then we're gonna repeat that until we only have one more loop on our hook. So yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and you'll have to scrunch your stitches up to make it a little bit easier to work through, and that's totally fine. You'll get a rhythm once you get the hang of this style of crochet. Once you've worked that to the end of your row, you have one more loop remaining on your hook, and this is the foundation row completed. So we're gonna go right into row number one, and this particular stitch pattern has a two row pattern repeat. So we'll cover row one and row two, and then we're gonna just repeat rows one and two over and over until our cowl is the right length. So row one begins with a Tunisian purl stitch. And to make a Tunisian purl stitch, we need to first move our working yarn in front of the hook. So right now it's in back. I'm just going to just lay it over the front of my hook like that. And then I'll find the next bar to work into. So I'm always going to ignore this side bar here. We're never gonna work there. So I'm gonna focus my attention on that next one. And I'm just going to sort of let the hook do its job, keeping that working yarn in place. And then insert your hook into that bar we're, we're staying on the same side of the work, so we're just going from one side into the next. And now we need to shift our working yarn 
behind the hook so we can yarn over. So I'm just going to work it like that and then yarn over and pull through this loop right here. Now that is the Tunisian purl stitch and you'll notice this line right here. This is what's going to create that purl bump. This is also how you know what stitch you've just worked. So if you get distracted and you have to put this down, you'll need to know where you were so that you can continue with your pattern. Well, that's how you know that you've worked a purl stitch. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is make a Tunisian simple stitch. We want to keep our working yarn at the back here, so I'm not doing anything there. I'm gonna find the next bar to work into and just slide my hook in from one side to the next and then yarn over and pull up a loop. Now that's how you do the Tunisian simple stitch. It's very similar to the Tunisian purl stitch. The difference is the placement of where your working yarn is. So to finish up row one, we're going to alternate those two stitches. We'll work a Tunisian purl stitch followed by a Tunisian simple stitch. So let's see how to do the purl stitch again. We'll make the yarn in front, insert our hook into the next bar, then yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we'll make a Tunisian simple stitch. We'll keep the, yarn, the working yarn in back, insert it into the next bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. And we're just gonna repeat those two stitches until we get to the end of the row. Once you have that last stitch remaining, I wanna show you exactly where to work your hook into in the last stitch. When you get to the end of row one, your second to last stitch will be a purl stitch. You wanna double check and make sure that is the case. If not, just go back and troubleshoot and find out where your mistake was. The last stitch we're going to make is in the little chain at the side. What we need to do is find two loops of the chain. So I've, I can see this loop right here, that's one that I'm targeting. But then see right in front of this finger here, there's a little bump that goes this way. I wanna work into that too. So I'm just going to insert my hook and you can catch them one loop at a time. So I've caught that first one there. And then I also wanna make sure I catch that back bump as well. So you'll catch both of those loops, yarn over and then pull up a loop. That's gonna give you a nice clean edge. You can go in just the one loop, but you will have a little bit more of an open, you'll see little holes or gaps along the side edge, and that's not going to match what we see over on this side of the work. So that's why you should definitely work into two loops of that side stitch rather than just one. So that completes the forward pass for row one, and we're going to do the return pass. Well, throughout this entire pattern, our return pass is going to be exactly the same, and it's just what we covered in the foundation row. We're going to yarn over and pull through just that first stitch. That's gonna give us that nice, clean little edge. And here's a little tip for you too. If you're having a hard time working into those side stitches, those two loops, when you work through this, this first stitch of the return pass, Go ahead and take a stitch marker and you're gonna catch the one loop and then the back bump. So once you catch both of those, you can just lock your stitch marker. These are locking stitch markers from Clover. If you don't have one of these, you can always use a bobby pin or a scrap piece of yarn will work too. So you'll finish the return pass the same as before. We're going to yarn over and pull through two until we only have one loop remaining on our hook. Now
Now, moving on to row number two, we're not doing a whole lot different from row one. What we are doing differently and what's important for you to note is that we are starting and ending the row different than we did for row one. So for row one, we started with a Tunisian purl stitch. Well, this time we're gonna start with a Tunisian simple stitch. So I'm keeping my working yarn at the back there. I'll find my first loop, my first bar, and insert my hook into that loop and pull up a loop and leave it on my hook. Then I'll go on to the Tunisian purl stitch. So pull that working yarn in front and insert your hook into the next bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. So as we're working these rows, we're always doing a, we're alternating Tunisian purl stitches and Tunisian simple stitches. We're just changing the order of them. So that's why we need the two row repeat. It's gonna offset and create that nice, really textured look. So we'll continue on with this row with the Tunisian simple stitch and a Tunisian purl stitch. And we're going to work this repeat until we have two stitches remaining. So that counts that little side stitch on the end and the one before it. So go ahead and work this repeat until you have those two stitches remaining. When you've made it to the end of row two, you have two stitches remaining. So I have one bar that I can see there and then I have my little side stitch to work into. I have ended on a purl stitch here, but I have two remaining and I wanna work a simple stitch for both of those stitches. So I'll just make a simple stitch like I normally would here. And then remember I, I marked those two loops for me. Well, you can just go ahead and insert your hook into the space and then release your stitch marker. And we're going to pull up a loop there. Then once we've finished the forward pass for row two, we're going to work on the return pass in the same way that we did for rows one and the foundation row. So we'll yarn over and pull through one loop. And if you like that stitch marker, you can go ahead and add that now to help you find those two loops you need to work into. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we only have one loop remaining on our hook. So this is what our work looks like now at the end of the return pass for row two. We have the nice pretty texture. We've got two rows of that. And then we have this open framework so that way we can start on the next row. Well, I mentioned before that we're going to repeat rows one and row two until our cowl measures a certain length. Well, we're going to pick up on row three next, but it's going to be a repeat of row one. So we're always gonna work row one, row two, row one, row two, row one, row two, and so on. Well, I have a couple of tips for you. Now that you've seen how to work the stitch pattern, I mentioned before that there are definitely chances where you can potentially get distracted or you might forget what stitch you just worked. So you need to be able to read your crochet. And we need to know what a purl stitch looks like on the previous row we need to know what a simple stitch looks like on the previous row, and we also need to know what it looks like as we're working them. So row two began with a Tunisian simple stitch. Well, the Tunisian simple stitch has a characteristic bar that goes just straight up and down, and you can see that right here. So you'll just locate your first stitch, so the open framework I've got my, my bar that I would normally work into, will directly below that, is the first stitch of the previous row. And yes, it is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. That's naturally how it wants to lay with the stitch pattern. The main thing that we're looking at here is that it's just one line, one bar that goes up and down. So we start row one with a purl stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and work that really quick. And just point out again what the purl stitch looks like when it's worked, okay? We've got that line that goes across. So now I'm looking at the next stitch. Let's say I, I'm not sure which stitch I need to work. So I'm going to look at the row below. Well, I've got this little line that goes across. So I have a, a line that goes up and down, 
and then a line that goes across. Well, in this case, that is a purl stitch. So I'm going to work the simple stitch next. Insert my hook just into the, the bar there and pull up a loop. Now I can see that the simple stitch has this vertical bar that goes up and down. So the idea behind this pattern is that we are always going to work a purl stitch in the simple stitches and work a simple stitch in the purl stitches. So let's look at this next one. That one, I have a line that goes straight up and down. So I know that is a simple stitch. So that means I need to purl stitch in this next bar. And now I'm looking at the next one here. I can see that little loop that goes across. So that tells me it's a purl stitch, which means I need to work a simple stitch into it. Now, if this is a little confusing to you, then just always know that we're repeating. We're doing a purl, simple, purl, simple, purl, simple for row one. And then we're flipping that for row two as we've seen previously. Now that you have the stitch pattern down, go ahead and work your cowls to the full length. So we're going to repeat rows one and two until our work measures 26 inches from this starting edge here. Now we do want to make sure that when it reaches that 26 inch measurement, that we finish the forward pass and the return pass of a row one. So keep that in mind when you get about to where the length you need it to be, you're gonna work a row one forward pass and a row one return pass. And then we're gonna pick up there with the bind off and I'll show you how to bind off in pattern next. Once you have finished the length of your cowls, the last thing we're going to do is bind off in pattern. So you need to have yourself set up so that you have finished the return pass of a row one. So that means we're going to pick up on our bind off row with a simple stitch. Now, if you are off just a little bit, honestly, it's not too big of a deal. The main goal here is that we are binding off in pattern and I wanna teach you what that means exactly. So for the bind off row in Tunisian crochet, we're going to work across the row, but bind the stitches off as we go. So we're not really going to be collecting them on our Tunisian hook anymore. So we'll work the first stitch as normal. So I'm going to insert my hook in as if to do the simple stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Here's where the bind off thing comes into play. We're going to take this loop and pull it through this loop here. And you can see now we have a stitch that is completely sealed off and we're ready to start on the next stitch. We're going to do a Tunisian pearl stitch next to maintain our pattern. Work that just as we normally would. And to bind it off, we're gonna pull this new loop through the loop on our hook. Now move on to simple stitch next and bind that stitch off. We're just gonna keep going with that until we get to the end of the row. We'll work our last stitch the same as we would before. So just working into two loops of that chain and binding it off just as we are these stitches here. Now one thing you will want to keep in mind as you're doing this bind off row is you want to be mindful of your tension. Whenever we're slip stitching or pulling this front loop through this back one here, it's really easy to just make that stitch a little too tight. And the goal is that our bind off edge, the tension matches the tension on our starting edge or our foundation edge here. So you can keep an eye on that as you're working through your bind off to make sure you've got things even and matching on both ends. Now when you get to your last stitch, you'll just insert your hook into those two loops of that little side stitch, the chain there, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. So that completes our bind off row. We're ready to fasten off now at this point, but we're going to use this tail 
to stitch the two ends of our cowl together. So go ahead and leave yourself a tail that's at least two times the width of your cowl. And then you can just pull that tail through the loop on your hook so you know it's not going to come undone. Now to seam the two ends together, the first thing you want to do is lay your work out flat on the table with the right side facing up. So this honeycomb sort of texture, that of course is the right side of the cowl. We can lay that facing upward and then just fold one half over. So now what we see is the wrong side of the work and now the two correct sides, or well, the one correct side is facing each other. So we want to do our stitching on the wrong side of the work. That way our seam looks a little bit neater. And I'm just going to flip this in the other direction so that I can start on this edge here and thread that big long tail on your darning needle. Now the first thing that we want to do is attach the two ends together. So this is my tail end here, and I'm going to go under both loops of that first stitch. And then what I'm gonna do is work a whip stitch. It's one of those stitches that I feel most comfortable working with, but honestly, you can take any approach to seaming this together. So with the whip stitch, I'm always going to be going in the same direction every stitch. So that's from this direction forward, and then I'll go through with the next one and go in that same direction all the way down. So what I want to do is find the next stitch on one side of the piece, put my needle under both of those loops, and then match that up with the second stitch on the other side and place that under both loops and then pull it tight. And then find the next stitch on both sides and stitch that together. So we're just gonna do this for every single stitch until we get to the end here. Once you have your two ends seamed together, then we can just take whatever is left over and weave that in. Now I'm gonna continue keeping this on the wrong side of the work because I like to weave in my ends on the wrong side. And for Tunisian crochet, for a lot of the stitch patterns anyways, you'll see this nice bumpy texture on the wrong side and that actually makes it really easy to weave in these ends. So I'm gonna work this tail here. I'm gonna work it down to this row. It's about the same color and it's far enough down away from the seam. So I'm just going to just work it under. There's really no specific or set way that you need to do this. And when I can see these little bumps here, that's when I'm gonna weave my tail around. So I'm just really going under one and kind of looping it back around and going underneath the next one. And when you do that, it kind of twists it together and it sort of hides the tail in a little bit more. So this is just one way to weave in your ends. Like I said, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. The end result is always the same. You just wanna make sure your end is woven in enough so that it doesn't come back out. So once you go in one direction for a while, it's always a good idea to go back in the other direction. And this time I'm going to go up a little row here. So that way I'm not going over the same space. Again, I'm catching some loops that are about the same color as my tail. And then once you feel like you're